Duxiada, Nora Dean, Nora Dean Iskulis. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my English lesson. It's about paragraph development. In a paragraph development, we're going to divide it into three subtitles. The structure of a paragraph, characteristics of a paragraph, and the process of writing a paragraph. Well, in the first place, what's a paragraph? A paragraph is a collection of sentences that talk about one single idea. In a paragraph development, we consider the following subtitles. The first subtitle is a structure of a paragraph. That's the three parts a paragraph is composed, which are topic sentence, body, and conclusion. From one English writing, paragraph development. This lesson is about developing and writing a paragraph. In the first place, what's a paragraph? A paragraph is a collection of sentences that talk about one single idea. That means you do, not, you do not need to talk too many ideas or too many different ideas in one paragraph. In a paragraph development, we consider the following subtitles. We divide into three subtitles. The first is called a structure of a paragraph. That is the parties of a paragraph, which are a topic sentence, a body, and a conclusion. I will explain each one later on. Well, the second subtitle is called The Characteristics of an Effective Biograph. This is how to make or write a quality paragraph. Every, everything needs quality. And the same is true for writing. You should write quality paragraphs with high quality. So to make your paragraph good and effective, you need to consider these three factors, unity, coherence, and emphasis. I will later explain them in detail, inshallah. The third part of our lesson is the third part of our lesson is the paragraph writing process, which is abbreviated as T G O W double R, where each letter stands for something. In this part, we will divide the paragraph into three stages. What should you do pre writing stage? What should you do at the writing stage? And what should you do at both writing stage? So, the process is in the first place before you write something, either your teacher or you choose a topic. The topic should be a narrow one that can be covered in one paragraph. Do not choose a broad topic because broad topics cannot be covered in one paragraph. The second step is gathering your ideas. That's brainstorming before you start writing your paragraph, you should think carefully 
what you are going to write. You have to ask and answer many topic-related questions before you start writing your paragraph. The third step is organizing. This is arranging your sentences in a logical way. These three, these first three steps are called the writing stage. This is what you have to consider before you draft your paragraph. The first step is called drafting or writing. You start writing your paragraph, drafting. Here we have the fifth step, which is revising. Revising means rereading. When you have finished writing and drafting your paragraph, you have to read it again and again and again. If you, if you find any mistakes, you have to change them. Maybe you, you need to change some words. You need to add some information or to remove some information. After revising, you share it with your friends or classmates. If they see anything wrong, then you have to change it. The last step is reviewing your paragraph, which is rewriting the changes that you have just made. What comes next is proofreading, to see grammatical errors, etc. So, let us start our lesson now. Paragraph structure. We are beginning with paragraph structure. Any paragraph has three parts. A topic sentence, a body, and a conclusion. What's a topic sentence? And what is its function? What does it do in a paragraph? Let us see. Let us see what it does in a paragraph. Well, in the first place, a topic sentence is the first sentence of your paragraph. That's what a topic sentence is. If you might think or ask yourself what it does in a paragraph, a topic sentence usually summarizes the main idea of your paragraph. It summarizes It summarizes the main idea of your paragraph in one sentence. Well, after your reader reads your topic sentence, he should know that the rest of your topic are about that. The rest about your paragraph is about that topic. For example, let me give you a topic sentence. There are two reasons why Nuruddin schools are the best ones in Somaliland. Now, this sentence summarizes the reason why I am writing this paragraph. My reader will immediately know that I am talking about Nuruddin schools. So this is an example what the topic sentence is. Now let us move to the second part of a paragraph. It's called the body. What is the body? What function it does in a paragraph? In a paragraph. The body usually is the supporting sentences that support your main idea. The body is the supporting sentences of your topic sentence. They usually give 
evidence. What evidence do I have that Nordin schools are the best in Somaliland? How can I prove that? What justification I have got to prove that Nordin schools are the best in the country? They give details. Evidence and reasons. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. For example, I said that there are two reasons why Nuruddin schools are the best in the country. What evidence do I have? Let us see the body of my paragraph. Firstly, the schools are run by an efficient management. The school is firstly, look the transition word I used. Firstly, the school are run, the schools are run by an efficient management. The quality and the e effectiveness of teaching and learning process is constantly monitored and evaluated by a team of supervisors on a daily basis. Look how I justify and give supporting sentences to my topic sentence that Nordin schools are the best. How? Because this is one reason. The quality and the effectiveness of teaching and learning process is constantly monitored and evaluated by a team of supervisors on daily basis. Secondly, the second reason why Nuruddin schools are the best is the schools have a high standard of education system based on the needs of the people. Secondly, this is a transitional word. Secondly, the school is half a high standard of education systems based on the needs of the people. This means the school curriculum was planned according to the needs of the local community. And usually when students come out of this school, they respond to the immediate needs of their community. Also, students are taught by the most qualified and well-trained teachers available in the country. These sentences in the body support the main idea of my paragraph, which talks about that Nordin schools are the best in Somaliland. Well, the third part of a paragraph construction is the conclusion. What's conclusion? What does it do in a sentence? A conclusion is also called a clincher sentence. Clincher sentence, that is the closing sentence. It, is, it usually concludes your paragraph. The function it does in the paragraph is that it restates the main idea. It tells again the main idea, the topic sentence of your paragraph. But this time, we use different words. This time, we use different words. We use different words. It restates, look, it restates the main idea with different words. For example, 
I'm going to conclude my paragraph about Noradin schools. Look how I look how I conclude the paragraph. Finally, if you are looking for effectively run schools, if you are as a parent, if you are looking for effectively run schools to enroll your children, the above reasons make Noradin schools appeal and suit the needs of all parents with school-age children. This again tells us that Noradin schools are the best schools available in the country. If you are looking for effectively run schools to enroll your children, the above reasons, we have mentioned two reasons, make Noradin schools appeal and suit the needs of all parents with school age children. Now we are moving to the next part of our lesson, which is the characteristics of a, the characteristics of a paragraph. This is how to make or to how to write an effective paragraph with good quality. Yeah, characteristics of a paragraph. What are the characteristics, characteristics of a paragraph? That's the qualities which an effective paragraph should have. To make your paragraph effective, you should consider these three points. The first one is called unity. This means that the all sentences in your paragraph should support the main idea. Look our previous example about Noradin schools. I have been talking about Noradin schools only. I was not referring to public schools because one idea at a time. Unity means to make or to write all your sentences in a way that they support the main idea. The second factor that makes your paragraph or that, that, that gives your paragraph quality is coherence. Coherence is the use of transitional words to connect sentences, to keep your idea in a logical flow. The coherence, the transitional words that I use include first, second, also, negus on one hand, on the other hand, the last but not least, finally, such words usually uh, make your paragraph coherent. They connect sentences smoothly. And the last factor is emphasis. Emphasis is used to show the differences or the similarities between two subjects. For example, when you are talking about public transport, for example, buses and taxis, they are both public transport, but you have to emphasize one, the one that you want to write more about it. And that's all for today. I will be back for another session, inshallah.